Hello, Justin with the Atlanta Brick... Sorry. Hi, Justin here with the Atlanta Brick Co. And I am joined with Mock Mistress Angie. Now, Mark and John get a lot of the Mock Mastery attention, but Angie is no slouch herself. Actually, she is amazing. And today we're going to look at some mocks we have made for our own city at the Atlanta Brick Co. We've had this city upstairs for a while. Yes. We've done close-ups on it. If you follow our Facebook live streams, I often show it. We are taking that sucker apart. We are. It is not as destroyed as it was, but it was pretty destroyed. Walk me through it. Initially, what happened, a lot of the builds were bought or borrowed by the Lego Masters. Mm -hmm. Season 2, right? Yeah. And so our city was just barren. And if again, if you saw the Facebook live streams, you saw that Chris was putting in official Lego modulars that we had just to fill the space. Correct. And then at some point, he approached you like, we need to redo this. Well, Mark and I were away for Lego Masters. The majority of what we had built was sold. So I think three of my modulars got built and another one of his. And basically, at that point, it was so barren that Chris put in... Lego modulars, which is not what that city is for, mm -hmm. but he also didn't have really the time nor the people to to create it. So when we came back, Chris said, I need you two to do more modulars, new ones for the city. And, and that's where we started. And you and Mark had done most or if not all of the modulars that were in there before. We did. I was excited because that's my thing is to like to do mm -hmm. modulars. So Mark and I walked around and looked at it and we thought, okay, what themes do we want this time? How big do we want them to be? And then we just started building. And being the Lego Guru. genius, yes, that he is, he can build three mocks to my, to my one. But on my end, he doesn't do any of the inside details. So he can build three uh, pretty easily with just the outside with no plan for the inside at all. And so mine are take a lot longer because of the details inside. Angie mentioned this real quick. I did want to address it. But she was involved with Lego Masters mm -hmm. behind the scenes. We won't go into that too much on this video because I think that deserves a whole video mm -hmm. itself because it's pretty darn interesting That's what fine. she did. So Chris said, we need to redo this mm -hmm. city. A lot of our modulars were gone that mm -hmm. we had. Mm -hmm. And then the few that remain, we decided, nah, let's just- They've been there long enough. No one wanted to out. buy them. So let's do something different and let's change it up with themes. And the last time we did the city, it was all 16 by 16s, I think. We still wanted to stick with that, but then there were a few, as you'll see, that needed to be bigger. Chris encouraged me next time to keep them all 16 by 16 again, just because they're more affordable mm -hmm. and they're a lot faster to be built. And that's another good point. These are all for sale. They are. So we build them because we like them. We build mm -hmm. them because they look cool on display, but we're also willing to part with them. We so are. If, we are. if you see anything and you're like, that needs to be in my city. You can buy them. You can now, buy it. The, they are expensive because, as we talked about in our other podcasts, not only do you have to pay for the brick, but you have to pay for the time that right. it took as well. So, modulars, mocks in general are going to be expensive. And some of these we're going to show you are huge. Yeah. And these aren't even all of them. We're just showing you the ones that we were directly involved in. Right. The 32 by 32 that I did took me over 30 hours to build. And again, if, when you see it, it's lots and lots of detail so it's not just saying that to inflate the price it truly took me yeah a good 30 or more hours to do it so um, love is in the details yes, yes i remember when i walked back there and you guys were working on it you guys just had posted notes mm -hmm. with your ideas and where they would go mm -hmm. can you tell us how you guys came up with those ideas for me it's just trying to think what would look really cool in someone's city. We thought, okay, the Jurassic Park that he did was super popular the last time. So we reintroduced that, but it's totally revamped in a different way. It's bigger it's too, bigger, right? Than the old one. It actually has the dinosaur coming out and in and out and in. So the mechanics of it, a lot more of these this time move and are mm -hmm. more lit up. And we're trying to figure out how to incorporate sound into a few of them as well. The one that John did, which is an Ninjago theme, we're trying to come up with a way that when the we push the button, there'll be some sort of a... Yeah, sure I don't know, like some that. kind of a... Hey, 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 yeah. yo, yo. That'd be <laughs> or, cool, the Jurassic Park of it roaring. Yeah, I dinosaur. mean, that, those are what yeah. we're trying to do. But again, everything is to be purchased. So that movement will come with the building that you buy. Figures won't, but the movement and lights will. I felt so honored. They asked me, hey, Justin, mm -hmm. do you want to do one? Mm -hmm. And I went like, oh, I'll, I'll try. But on the inside, I did a main squeal. Mm-hmm. 
And he did a really good job. So they gave me a wacky one because on the poster mm-hmm. they're like, you do this one. And it's Batman Bank. So I had to make a bank that was owned by Batman or mm-hmm. that was run by Batman or themed both. by Batman. Yeah, Funded by Batman. It, it funded probably. at least. <laughs> so it was, it was up to me. Angie and Mark held my hand through a lot of it, but they let me build one. So I have my own in he the module. Well. In, it was his very first one and he did really well. So more than likely he will be called back the next time we need to do the city a third time. Man squeal. Yeah. So the ones we're going to look at today is this gorgeous Wizard of Oz. It's going to be a travel agent. Agency. And beside it, I'm still working on it. This will be Dorothy's shoe shop, but it will be in all black and white and grays, kind of like an homage to the film itself. To next contrast to all the, the bright color. Yeah, I but love it, it. The only color on this will be uh, Dorothy's ruby slipper, probably at the top somewhere, but it'll be her shoe shop. So that's also what we do is we don't just come up with theme, we come up with what it actually does. It kind of is a wink to it. So obviously the yeah. travel agency for Oz, you know, that's because of his balloon and traveling and all this film. That's what I love about these so much and the awesome ideas you guys come up with is it's not just a coffee shop. It's a Jurassic World themed coffee mm-hmm. shop. And here we have Angie's gorgeous Wizard of Oz inspired travel agency. Now, does this come with the figures? It does not. However, they can be purchased. Some people probably already had these figures because they were so popular with CMF. They probably would already have them. On the glorious sides, look at that. Unlike the other ones I've built, this one is not open in the back where you can see everything inside without having to lift it up. We tried to do it as like a true modular would be. There are completely decorated inside. And we will go inside. We will. To see, so just kind of walk us through the outside. What, I guess, inspired you? What were you going for? I mean, I think it's kind of obvious you did such a nice (laughs) job. When you guys helped me come up with the idea of a travel agency, that immediately got my imagination sparked into this direction of um, the hot air balloon on top. You know that this is how you can get where you're going, and as we when we open it up, you'll see inside more. But I wanted the front to be really like the Emerald City entrance or the doorway in which Dorothy and her friends went through. So I chose really, really tall doors. I looked at a lot of pictures of the Emerald City and that scene where they knock on the door and the guy comes out, and actually, he comes out through the peephole to see who's here and of course the yellow brick road was a huge inspiration and then the poppy flowers that they fell asleep to before entering here I got tried to capture that as well and then just tons and tons of trans green and I noticed you did yellow brick with trans yellow Mm -hmm. uh, plates so I did that because it really made it look more of a gold road because I tried it with the clear tiles on top of yellow and it just didn't pop like I wanted it to. I think I literally took every trans yellow tile that we have in the store. This really does add a uh, luminescence, I Mm -hmm. guess is the word Mm -hmm. to it. Oh yeah, and this, by the way, is a facade in the front. So the back is what comes off. The reason that there's a hole here is so when, when we light it up, you'll be able to see uh, this, the bricks in the front here, the facade of brick lit up. That's the Oz himself with the Tin Man making a deal. When you go inside, you enter into the receptionist area. And if you wanna see the Oz to go on a trip, you have to go up the tornado twirled staircase. The little butterfly girl from CMF, I think series 17 uh, as the receptionist just thought that was a little different idea. Someone left their ticket on the chair, ready to go up. That probably was 10 man. Inside the Oz's area is the inside of Oz's office and he has a huge green throne with flames on either side, just like the movie. He's got an area for pamphlets on the right there. He is the travel agent. And then his desk area, which features the courage badge, the heart, and the certificate of achievement for scarecrows. I made my own Oz because there was none that Lego made. He looks a little grumpy. The torso I think is from Ninjago. 
Yeah, I believe that's the... Um, Is that Zane? The Tin Man Zane, basically. Something, yeah. The retro Zane. Yeah. But a little detail inside. His flames are aglow. That is awesome. Oh. Cannot take the credit for the mechanism which moves the scarecrow balloon. I am still learning how to do that, but our resident Lego genius, Mark Erickson, helped me do that. And then the next building is different in the sense that... <laughs> it is a monster. It's, it's a monster, it's huge, but it's also something that Chris told you very specifically mm -hmm. make this. Yes, he wanted Baker Street. The only way I could really truly do it justice, I felt, was to make it a 32. In real life, Chris visited the Sherlock Holmes Museum mm -hmm. when he was in college or high school, mm -hmm. and so he had such fond memories. He said, Angie, could you please make that? Mm -hmm, he did, and so I made it a 32 because it just needed to be this big. In the future, we will not be doing them this big because two things. One, the cost of it is higher than the 16s, but two, it just takes over the city. <laughs> yeah. It feels huge next to some of them. This is amazing the way it comes apart and the way she's detailed all the walls. On the outside, she was forced to make it look like the real picture, but on the inside, she could do whatever she wanted. So My she, imagination. It was awesome. It's <laughs> awesome. All right, so here is our Sherlock Holmes building. Tell me about that process, how that's like versus just making up your own thing. Do you like it better? Do you like it worse? I actually like it sometimes better if I have something just to look at. Uh, it helps me not have to be quite so creative, so to speak, to figure out how to everything fits together. And, well, let me say, on the outside. The inside was all kind of my imagination. Um, and because I had to make the outside look a certain way, that did kind of mess me up in how the back was built. Chris had asked me a while back to create this for the city, and I think he only wanted it to be a 16 plate wide. But once I started really looking at the building itself and pictures of it, I told him, I said, honestly, there's no way to really do it justice unless I do a full 32. Because normally we don't like to put 32s in our city. It's just way too small to hold a 32. He let me do it, and so this is what came out of it. If you ever look at pictures, hopefully it will be almost an exact replica of the front of it, the actual Baker Street in England, and it's a museum slash gift shop for Sherlock Holmes fans. For me, the right side is the Sherlock Holmes museum slash gift shop, and then the left door, which I did not know in real life where that went, so my imagination was this is actually Sherlock Holmes' apartment and this is the entrance to his apartment. Are those little tulip things, are those actually Lego or is that Fago? I think it's Fago, but I liked them. So. They look good. <laughs> Ooh, Lego should make those. The yeah. difficult part about this was because it's going in our city, it's kind of a mishmash in the back. We had to leave it open at the bottom to allow for the light. What are they called? Adapters? Or I don't know. What, bricks bricks or whatever. We had to allow room for them to be able to fit into all these different holes to Which, hide them in the city. This is currently not outfitted with any Correct. light. Because of that request, uh, it kind of changed everything and how I built the whole inside, which made it a lot more difficult. So really it doesn't look matchy-matchy too much on the sides because all that's gonna be covered up. So if someone were to purchase this for their city, they would just have to make sure that they had stuff on either side. I love the little pigeon house. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, you made your own little birdies. Yeah, I originally thought about what would have been on up at the roof. There wouldn't have been an air conditioning unit or anything in that time of Sherlock Holmes. So I was either gonna hang up, have a clothesline hung up, and then I had already thought on my own maybe some pigeons, and I couldn't decide, and then when Justin saw it, he's like, why not pigeons? And I'm like, oh, that's what I thought too. So that's what it became. So the roof comes off. There's a lot to see, but let me just go ahead and take off the front and back as well so you can see from the bottom floor first, if that's okay. That is a great idea. I love how it sections, because that's the problem with a lot of these modulars is that you can't see all the details. Mm -hmm. You can't get into it. You've actually 
solved that problem. Now one side of the building is this beautifully detailed little vignette. Thanks. Yeah, I, the only thing I don't care for, and I know Lego would poo-poo, is the fact that there's just a door that looks like you are going to kill someone, which I guess could be kind of like an ironic thing for a Sherlock Holmes mystery, but meant to go into the apartment, which you'll see. This right side, though, is where it starts, which is the museum slash gift shop for the Sherlock Holmes adventure. So this bottom floor would be more like the museum of him sitting in, at his, in his chair in front of a fire, uh, just thinking about his next adventure or whatever, or smoking his pipe or whatever it is that he did, which his pipe is on the mantle. And then the top floor walking up is the actual gift shop. You can buy all kinds of different maps, potions, I suppose. I don't know. I don't know that he sold potions. but. <laughs> I don't know what they sell there. I've never been. Chris asked you to do this because he had been here he and this was a did. fond memory for him. I think he was in college and he did an internship in, in England. And while he was there, he visited this place, if I'm not mistaken. And he does like detective work. He does. He's kind of a sleuth himself. Yes, he does. Yeah. What's over here? So then, yeah, then you walk in here and it's Sherlock's Holmes, uh, the entrance to his apartment. There are framed pieces of art all in the hall area of where he is. If you want to see how I did one of the framed art, you can look here in the uh, uh, gift shop. A lot of them are just framed like that with the tile in the middle. So I tried to find parts and pieces from different sets tile-wise that I felt like he would enjoy. A little area when he gets home, he might want to drink before he heads upstairs to his actual apartment. This, this is, is the front, front half. This would go right here in this front, just okay. like that. This is actually what this door is actually leading into this part of the build. And it's super hard to see because it's so narrow. But when he walks in the door here, uh, there's a hat rack here for him and his friends, whatever. Dr. Watson. Of course, of course, of course. Another piece of framed art on the wall, but you can see it. Of course, they're very tall ceilings, so there will be spiders in the ceiling. And then I imagined that as Sherlock Holmes takes his adventures throughout the world, he keeps pieces and parts and artifacts of places that he's been. So he keeps those stored on the top shelves all around his whole apartment. And then you see in here, he's got a chair by the fireplace and he's got a teapot there candle on the fireplace and for anyone that's a huge Sherlock fan and or more detailed and you're thinking but wait outside the front of the building appear to be electric lights and yet inside in his apartment and his bedroom there are candles well that's because this is more back into his time frame where he lives but the museum is present day. There's a grandfather clock on the wall over here as you go up the stairs. And then this back wall faces Actually goes, this room. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, we have so, some wanted posters. Some... Yeah, I figured that Sherlock would want to keep up with every single person in Lego that is wanted for something. So how it would look is this is the back side of the building and it attaches like this so that he's in his bedroom and this, so he came up the stairs and into his bedroom. It doesn't drop off, it actually goes like this. So it matches up like that. That must have been a complex It was. It was uh, geometry to figure out. It was, that's why I said, building it to look good on the outside and plus having to allow for lights in the back was, that's what made this build harder. He's obsessed with all the newspaper articles, wanted posters, there's even a typewriter there in the right here. That's a typewriter. And I even found the tile that looks like paper and it says to Doctor Strange because Doctor Strange could easily have gone into the world of Sherlock Holmes and they were friends. And then this side of his bedroom is where he works and where he does all of his laboratory things and et cetera. And again, he's keeping up with all the things that he travels with, all his books, et cetera. His bed is pretty small because he hardly ever sleeps. He's always working on something, his projects. I love the old-fashioned telephone. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got his violin. Mm -hmm. He's famous for his uh, another his another pipe. Another pipe. He's There's always smoking pipe. everywhere he goes. His magnifying glass. Can't have too many of those. 
Uh, and the typewriter build, such a small scale, but it definitely looks like a typewriter. That looks awesome. Thanks. And that one I can't take credit for. Somebody had it on YouTube, how to build one, and I was obsessed with using it in something I did, and this was perfect for it. The last one we're going to talk about is the Batman bank. It's so awesome. Angie helped me come up with the idea that we would do Harley Quinn's psychiatry office. And of course, that's Harley Quinn. And the top was all his idea. It was awesome ideas. Harley Poison Ivy's Poison apartment. Poison Ivy's apartment. Which is a greenhouse. So mm -hmm. let's get into it. And this is the Bat Bank with Harley Quinn's therapy or psychiatry uh, office in the middle. And then Poison Ivy's apartment at the top. Mark is going to print out a sign mm -hmm. there and we'll stick it on there. And my inspiration was, uh, you guys told me to make a bank that was Batman. And I thought, what the heck? Mm -hmm. um, what an awesome mashup. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, okay, Gothic, uh, go with the full Gotham City kind of look. And what's Gothic? Churches, churches are Gothic. So we have these stained glass. You'll see those when we plug it in. Harley Quinn's area, and it's very obviously Harley Quinn. We designed this on paper, we wanted it to look like a Harlequin mannequin in her original uniform. Even the top represents the white little thing on her original uniform, villainous costume, and how those are the little bells or whatever. Uh, so that's why the top's white. There's not much to see around the sides. Oh, you do see Poison Ivy's influence coming through mm -hmm. there. So there's not much to see around the sides because I was told that it's going to lay flat against another building. So you, you didn't, I used whatever we had. That's why it's kind of ugly on the sides. We have uh, the back. I did not put internal stairs in it. So we built this after the fact. I think it looks great. And I, we also, remember you also said it was going to be like the secret entrance. Yes. Nobody really knows that she has a psychiatry office. Exactly. You won't even call it that. And, and then we have the greenhouse area to Poison Ivy's I apartment. I built that big uh, mm -hmm. Venus fly trap. And I'm plugging it in. Oh, I love the way that turned out. Mm -hmm. um, this is so cool with the lighted stained glass. So pretty. And even with the one head, the light above us doesn't, if we had all the lights out, it would totally shine even more. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? The stained glass just looks so cool. And then of course we can see straight into Harley Quinn's therapy room, which we'll go in there in a minute. Poison Ivy is standing in there. She, she just is. Isn't hard hidden to see? amongst the trees it's so cool. and the plants and stuff. I just wanted it to be chaotic. It is. And she uh, is. Yes, yes. I love the way that turned out. So cool. It's beautiful. Angie, since this was my first um, modular, Angie did help me a lot on how to design these to come apart. Uh, and Mark, too. Mm -hmm. Mark had a lot of advice with this. This is the top. It's going to be hard to really get in there because the ceiling is so high. Uh, Angie did the floor for me. And then I asked her, just give me a lot of space to just do whatever. Mm -hmm. And so we got the bed in there with a little end table and actually a little TV spot. But other than that, it is all plants. Yep, this guy fell down. I just put the plants in first and then just put whatever space was left. I covered with plants. Angie made the bed and the TV and her oh. living space as well. So she's good at that. Uh, I love the way the all the Venus fly traps, the mm -hmm. man eaters, mm -hmm. turned out. Very, very yep, cool. Yep, and you can't tell, but there's it's a green tile down there, but it's surrounded by trans red plates because it's kind of we don't know if it's blood or the lifeblood of all the plants. We yeah. don't know. It was an imaginative. Maybe plant. that's what's blood. left of her last mm -hmm. house guest. Yeah, it could be. It's slight design flaw. The seam right there for the two sides. You do have to take this off or turn it that way. It's uh, like a key to unlock it. Yeah. And then it's gonna have to be careful because of the wires. And this is Harley Quinn's psychiatry office. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Bane. He's in a session right now. Mm -hmm. Dr. Quinzel. Again, Angie did the furniture and the floor. I thought that turned out awesome. 
Still very chaotic, but needed to be for her. Way glass here that nobody knows about really. So you can't see that. That's a mirrored sticker mm -hmm. right there. And on the other side is the padded room. The padded room. It's it's a little dark, but I think we had a lot of I fun. Like it should be. Angie figured that out. We decided, oh, there'd be a padded room. That's how you do that. <laughs> there were some challenges and some geometric differences with that, how we had to make that happen. How did you do the, look where it looks like he's in a straight jacket? That is a uh, Minecraft uh, villager. Hard to come by, but we mm -hmm. did have one random torso in the back <laughs> in our Minecraft graveyard. Mm -hmm. So uh, we wanted the white one, but the white villager apparently is very rare and expensive. Very rare. And then the uh, receptionist, receptionist area. Right Who there. Who is our receptionist? That is just a Joker thug. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. And this Shout was the... Shout out to her boyfriend, the Joker, as you first walk in the door. That's right. This is the one piece of furniture I did. Uh, Angie did everything else. And now we have the bat bank. Okay, now he's taking off the top top so that we can get to the pièce de résistance. One interesting thing, because of the stained glass, we really wanted the light to shine through mm -hmm. that. So normally for the light bricks, you just put them on top. They're literally just bricks. Mm -hmm. But we decided to angle these so that you actually had the light not just shine straight down, but forward as well. And that really Spotlight. helps. Yeah, that really helps the stained glass to pop out. The roof is really tall on this, but I can move this around a little easier because there's no lights. Uh, wires we have to mess with. It was Angie's idea, I loved it, that make the safe, the vault, look like the bat cave. And so we have lots of browns and grays. It does open slightly, and just Batman's influence is all over this thing. While we're talking about the back, we'll just show all the weird things, things in the back. In vault. Of course, since it's the Atlanta Brick Co., we have access to all sorts of crazy things, like we took that off of Apocalypse Berg set that we merch. had. The Bat merch. All the money. Catwoman. I believe that's a Fago, but there's a Catwoman in there ready to pounce. Mm -hmm. It's not the that video secure. Cameras that are, <laughs> the video cameras that are watching everything. Yeah. Batman knows. He knows. Speaking of Batman, there he is in his uh, on his desk. With his dad's picture hanging above him. That was an awesome detail that Angie found, because that is the... From the original the, Batcave. The, Mr. Wayne, yeah. Batgirl is right there, and we have DC superheroes in line to get their money. I wish we could show, because Supergirl is flying. Yeah. I wish you could <laughs> see that detail, because that was hilarious. She's... I put her red uh, laser eyes... Mm -hmm. face on, mm -hmm. so she is getting really upset at the bank teller. Mm -hmm. uh, she's... And that's why she seems taller because she's, she's actually flying. I wonder why she's upset flying. with the bank teller because, you know, they're so honest. And that's right. <laughs> they messed up her deposit, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, superheroing doesn't pay that well. Yeah. She has to watch every penny. So Joker and who else is That's Man Bat and uh, Cat Girl, Catwoman. Catwoman are doing the telling I, and they are locked in. They can't get out because, yeah. look, there's... There's the jail cell yes. door. So the joke is that uh, Batman's rehabilitation program is that he makes them work at his bank and they're constantly surrounded by the thing that they want the most. They actually made a prison uniform Joker and mm -hmm. Catwoman from the Lego Batman movie. So it just worked out perfectly. And they can't get back there because there is a... There's a cell door. And a camera. And a camera. So no tomfoolery there. Plus Batman's right there. He's watching them. And that was our mocks. Of course, we have more. Mark has made, like you said, he made he's three made at a time. He's working, he's working on one right now as we speak. We're going to get him in here and show off some of his mocks mm -hmm. that he's done for our city. John and uh, Joe also made a large, yes. the back half. Mm -hmm. What used to be Starcourt Mall, mm -hmm. it's not done yet. It's still a work in progress, but it's looking good. And that'll be its own video it too, will. I think. Mm -hmm. John also did a he Temple did of one. Air Jitsu he did it. on a 16 by 16. Yes. It's awesome it's to see so that cool. kind of micro scale down a mm -hmm. little bit and it of course since every building is two things mm -hmm. it's sensei Wu's tea shop from the show yes thank you so much oh, absolutely. angie absolutely. we look forward to more awesome mocks don't forget please subscribe leave us a comment are there any Thumbs mocks up. you're working on is there anything you want to see us do mm -hmm. we have the unique ability to 
be have access to all these minifigures and all these parts. We do try to keep rare parts out of these. Yes. Again, it just drives up the cost. Mark and I are already planning for the next time we have to redo the city. We've already got two specific themes that we're going to add. I'm not going to I'm going to keep them a secret for now, but I'm already excited. I'm like, somebody buy one so we can rebuild it. <laughs> so it's full now, right? So everything has been mm -hmm. completed. Yes, now. everything outside for Marks have been completed. I've got to get inside of them and work on that. But otherwise, the building themselves are complete. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, share this video if you like seeing Mocks, if you like seeing what we do around in the store. And we will see you guys very soon. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.